Joining me now is the senior editor at large at Newsweek and host of the Josh Hammer Show, Josh Hammer. Josh, let's start with Donald Trump. He's scored a huge unanimous win in the Supreme Court uh, just a day before Super Tuesday, where voters in 15 states will decide who should be the Republican candidate for US president. Uh, this win was expected, Josh, but are you surprised it was unanimous? Even the most left-leaning justices back Trump being uh, back on the ballot. You know, Rita, this was an extraordinary oral argument at the Supreme Court. It was just under a month ago, February 8th, I believe, was the date. Trump was blessed to have an extraordinarily talented attorney argue this case for him at the U.S. Supreme Court. Jonathan Mitchell, longtime friend of mine, former Solicitor General of Texas, one of American conservatism's greatest legal intellects in a just world, Jonathan Mitchell would be a federal judge at minimum, ideally the U.S. Attorney General. So he, he had a very good lawyer on this case. And the oral argument was really extraordinary, not just for Jonathan's lawyering capabilities, but the fact that the, even the liberal justices, specifically Katanji Brown Jackson and Elena Kagan, two of the three more liberal justices on the court, they, they were very skeptical of Colorado's case here. So the only question really all along for court watchers such as myself was whether Sonia Sotomayor would try to reassure her hashtag resistance friends in the MSNBC far left crowd and issue a solo fiery dissent or something along those lines. So I, for the past few weeks, Rita, my line has been this case is going to be eight to one or nine to zero. So to answer your question, no, I was actually not shocked. I, I was mildly surprised because I, I very rarely predict optimistic things when it comes to the American judiciary in general. So to actually have a, a good outcome is definitely mildly surprising. The, the three liberal justices did issue a, a somewhat abstruse concurrence in the judgment, but I, I read it and it wasn't really obvious to me what exactly they were complaining about. If it seems to me like they felt some sort of need just to write something else to try to kind of wink, wink, bat signal a little bit to their liberal fans all out there that they're not really as bad as Clarence Thomas and Sam Alito. But they, they were really quibbling. It wasn't a very substantive writing. So overall, fantastic day. I, I mean, absolutely fantastic day at the United States Supreme Court. They have said that Donald Trump cannot be removed from the ballot box. And ultimately, Rita, it, it, it is an affirmation of lowercase r Republican self-governance and the very notion that is rooted in America's constitutional preamble that it is we the people who decide our own destiny still in this country for the most part. I mean, for the most part, Jack Smith and his merry band of prosecutors are tr doing their darndest to try to change that when it comes to the sprawling lawfare apparatus and all the criminal prosecutions. But for now, for now, this is a big win, and if Democrats want to beat Donald Trump and Republicans, they're going to have to do it at the ballot box, not via this ballot access removal gambit. Well, the Democrat meltdown has been predictable, and frankly, some of it is a little bit sinister. Listen here to Democrat Jamie Raskin say he and fellow party members are still going to try to force Trump off the ballot. I am working with a number of my colleagues, including uh, Debbie Wasserman Schultz and Eric Swalwell, to revive legislation that we had to set up a process by which we could determine that someone uh, who committed insurrection is disqualified by Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. And the House of Representatives already impeached Donald Trump for participating in insurrection uh, by inciting it. So the House has already pronounced upon that. And uh, lefty journalists are also losing it over the court's decision. Uh, I could bring you a million examples, but uh, Keith Overman is really big clown himself. So he tweeted this unhinged rant. He said, the Supreme Court has betrayed democracy. Its members, including Jackson, Kagan and Sotomayor, have proved themselves inept at reading comprehension. And collectively, the court has shown itself to be corrupt and illegitimate, it must be dissolved. Uh, not an not a overreaction there at all, Josh, but some of, some of the left cannot cope with reality. They cannot cope with this craziness from Colorado was never going to stand up to any level of scrutiny. Yeah, I, I think my favourite reactions today, Rita, are, are those who are flipping out at the liberal justices who are flipping out at Sonia Sotomayor, Katanji Brown, Jackson. I mean, you know, newsflash, if you are condemning Sonia Sotomayor and Katanji Brown Jackson for <laughs> being too reactionary, far right wing, 
you probably need to go see a psychiatrist. I mean, I, mean, I, I am not a psychiatrist by training, but there's probably something going on there between your ears inside the old <laughs> noggin that that suggests that you really need a reality check, frankly. And Keith Olbermann, I mean, look, he's he, he's calling Elena Kagan and some of out for, for reading comprehension. You know, who, Rita, if, if I were to give you one data point each for Elena Kagan and Keith Olbermann, and by the way, not every day that I defend Elena Kagan here, but if I had to give you just one yes. data point for, the, for, for, for these two individuals, Elena Kagan, former dean of Harvard Law School, Keith Olbermann, former ESPN sports anchor who was best known for laughing himself <laughs> silly on the on, in the sports camera, who has better <laughs> reading comprehension here? I mean, it just... Give me a break. It, it defies reality. Unfortunately, it's actually not just liberals who have the clown themselves. There are many in kind of the never Trump, anti-Trump controlled opposition right mm. who have done so as well. 